I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Sasha Malich, head of the DAPI team at API3. Sasha, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on. Uh, thank you for having me. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into uh, the world of Oracle's APIs development and all of that interesting stuff that not as many people are familiar with that are just involved with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some of the larger cap coins. I would love for you to kick off our discussion by, first of all, just giving an overview of, of API 3 and what the platform does and the services that it provides for the cryptocurrency industry. Okay, <clears throat> so I'll try to keep it brief. API 3 is the DAO that um, maintains and manages a network of first party oracles. So that's that's it in, in a sentence. But um, I think I should probably get into a little bit about the Oracle space because that's kind of a prerequisite to understanding what we do. How does that sound? Definitely, yeah. I'd love to hear more about Oracles and first party Oracles. Okay. So Oracle, what Oracles do is that they, they bring data onto the blockchain. And um, so I, I guess I'll go a little bit back to basics. The uh, the, the blockchain is a very isolated network for security reasons. Uh, the, the nodes that are able to talk to each other, they don't talk to any other networks. Uh, and, and why that's important is because the only data, what this means is that the only data on the blockchain is essentially ownership data, who owns what token or what information is in what address. There's no notion of an outside world on the blockchain. So natively, the only applications you can build on something like a general blockchain, like Ethereum, is like moving tokens around, essentially, um, mm -hmm. plus a few other things. Like it's very limited, but it's not, um, I don't want to make it sound like it's a limitation of the blockchain. It's just because of the high security, um, the high security requirements of the blockchain that makes it so it doesn't communicate with other networks, which means like it doesn't communicate with APIs, which is how all other computer systems basically communicate these days. So it's blocked off from from uh, off chain data. So to use a specific example uh, of why this is important, I, I imagine people that are listening are familiar with DeFi. Like I off the top of my head, I don't know of any DeFi app that doesn't use price data. So typically Ethereum price, but all sorts of other prices. So it's kind of ironic, but the, the price of a crypto token isn't on the chain. It's decided by, it's mostly decided by external markets. So pretty much all of DeFi necessitates price feeds. So one way you can think about it is one, one um, category of applications that oracles enable is, is DeFi just through creating price feeds and enabling that kind of information on the blockchain. Definitely. Yeah, I think that's a great start, Sasha. And yeah, without these oracles, there would just be a bunch of tokens. And how would you value them? How would you determine what the price is on different exchanges and get the average and bringing that external information onto the blockchain into the internal world to actually have a value for for those tokens. Um, so you talked about how API three has uh, a DAO that also includes first party oracles. Like, What does it mean to have a first party oracle as opposed to just an oracle? Um, so you, you can't hear any background noise still, right? No, it's good. Okay. Okay. Sorry. It's like, it's so noisy here. Um, first party oracles versus third party oracles. So this is actually a, a term we, we came up with in the API three white paper, but I've seen a couple of people using the term since then. So it's essentially, um, the difference between a first party oracle and a third party or oracle is, um, does the. So is the person that owns the data uh, the person that transmits it to the blockchain? That, that, that wasn't explained very well. So a third-party oracle essentially gets information from somewhere else, typically a web API, like with crypto prices, it queries a, uh, a crypto price API and then transmits that to the blockchain. But a first-party oracle is the data provider themselves. So in this case, an API provider would be transmitting that data directly. So um, our solution arguably centers around this this idea of first party oracles being better in a lot of contexts, mainly because you eliminate like a, a middleman that transmits the data, um, which which reduces security risks and oftentimes reduces costs as well. 
because a lot of third-party Oracle solutions have multiple third parties querying the same API. Mm -hmm. um, so cutting out that layer in a lot of contexts, uh, especially if you're getting information from web APIs, it just makes more sense to get it from the data source from the web API directly instead of relying on uh, third-party nodes. Definitely, that makes sense. And can you talk about with API 3, they have a DAO that has, is it a conglomeration of, of different oracles and, and what's the benefit of, of having this DAO? That's a good question. I'm trying to figure that out myself. <laughs> like the DAO, the DAO space is very experimental and I think there's a lot of like growing pains and everyone I know that works for one is like, um, I mean, I mean, ultimately I think it's a good thing, but um, so is, are, is your is your audience familiar with what a DAO is? For the most part, you know, the DAOs are fairly early on with decentralized autonomous organizations and the functionality that they can have, I think is still limited. Uh, but, you know, they've been around since since the Ethereum original DAO. It's just a matter of how much functionality is there in the DAO. Yeah. So I think with a DAO, it's, it, it turns into kind of a, this organism that's going to move in ways and evolve in ways that you might not exactly predict like compared to like a traditional corporation so a lot of what i can say about the project and where it's headed is kind of um up to the future but um one 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 of the main reasons we have a DAO is um to create arguably i mean nothing's purely decentralized but arguably um it's a more decentralized product when the the decision making is made in a decentralized way. It's not mm -hmm. sufficient that just the protocol is quote unquote decentralized. It's, it's who's who's making the decisions in terms of changes and what gets deployed. So I think that's the general idea. But one one thing I've noticed that's a huge benefit to us in the community is that it really enforces transparency. Like anytime money moves out of the treasury, it has to be done through a proposal and done through a vote. So you can see who's working for the DAO, what they're doing, what they're paid, where money is going, mm -hmm. um, what kind of decision, all the decision making for the most part is is uh, transparent. And I think that's really important when it comes to data, uh, which I think is going to become more and more of a big topic. I mean, it is in the kind of off chain world with regards to like, quote unquote, fake news and whatnot, and which data is reliable and which one isn't. Uh, I think it's really important uh, to be really explicit about where the information is coming from. Mm -hmm. So, so that's part of our solution is you know having first party oracles. It's like um, by default you know where the information is coming from versus a third party. But there's also the transparency of the um, the creation and maintenance of the network through the DAO. So it's like you you really know where the data is coming from and how the decisions were made um, with what is done with that data. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a bit rambly. Uh, that was a bit rambly, but I hope, I hope something uh, there made sense. Yeah, no, that makes sense, Sasha. And I'm curious about, you know, just to go back to this first party oracles versus third party, you know, with a first party oracle, and they're actually providing the external information as well. Is that more or less decentralized than a third party oracle? And is it about, you know, being as decentralized as you can? Or is there some other goal within that? That's that's such a good question. The whole thing about decentralization is like a whole nother topic. Like I, I heard someone say it recently, and maybe it's a common quote, but decentralization isn't the goal, it's a tool. Like mm -hmm. as soon as it becomes a goal, it becomes very nebulous because there's always pockets of centralization everywhere. So I, I don't even like the term fully decentralized or because there's, yeah, there's always little pockets of control here and there. And it's a matter of just mm -hmm. being able to balance the, um, the trade-offs of of that um sorry what was your question it was oh, oh third party versus first party and uh in terms of decentralization right yes okay okay that's a really good question because it's almost not really it's not really about decentralization and i'll explain why i mean what i mean by that like in in the extreme case if there's a certain type of information that is only provided by one api provider um like like let's say uh, like some kind of banking information that comes from a particular bank, like they're going to be the only people that serve that kind of information. Mm -hmm. um, then if you throw on 10 third party nodes to transmit that data, it doesn't become any more decentralized because the bottleneck in terms of decentralization is the data source. So mm -hmm. if there's just one data source, 
you know, having 10 third party oracles versus a first party oracle, like neither is more decentralized. So it, it's like part of our solution. It's, it's kind of a subtle point because I'm glad you bring it up. Part of it is just being explicit about the fact that in the Oracle problem, the bottleneck in terms of decentralization is the data source itself. So, and I, yeah. I think a lot of, I, I think a lot of, um, I don't like to pick on other or uh, other Oracle projects because I think everyone is really trying their best, but I've seen a lot of uh, data feeds currently being used that advertise like 20 to 30 nodes in their network. But um, I know that there aren't like, 20 to 30 quality crypto price APIs. Like clearly there's multiple nodes querying the exact same API. So it creates this yeah. illusion of something being more decentralized, of there being more independent data points than there really are. So the question of first party versus thir third party, I think is just recognizing the fact that the centralization bottleneck is in the data source and then kind of tailoring a solution to that. In the context of web API data, I, I do want to make it clear there's other kinds of data you might want um, third parties, for, third party nodes for, but this is specifically for querying a web API and bringing it onto the blockchain. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Definitely, Sasha. Yeah, thank you for that. And I understand now it's really the source yeah. of the information. Dep doesn't matter how many roads you take to get to, yeah. you know, the final destination. It's what was the source and, and how yeah. Yeah. credible, decentralized is that information. Um, now, I'd love to just jump into, you know, the workings of, of API 3 right now and, and with your team, you know, are you currently just providing, you know, those Oracle uh, data source information into the DeFi world to help uh, bring price feeds and other information into DeFi? Uh, is that pretty much the focus right now? And, and is your team currently expanding that out uh, with as DeFi continues to explode? Uh, so we're not currently live, <laughs> to make okay. that clear. Um, our, our, our Oracle node is actually currently in, um, in auditing. Uh, but in terms of like our goals in terms of providing data, um, yeah. yeah, there are a lot of like some of the API providers that have um, joined the network. They, they are crypto price APIs and also other types of price APIs. And then we do get requests for price feeds. But um, I think just from conversations with the team, it seems like we're all in agreement that things are, De DeFi is not going away, but there's going to be new blockchain applications. Like blockchain is gonna go beyond DeFi. And in order to go beyond DeFi, you need new new types of data. It's like what I said earlier, like price feeds pretty much enable DeFi. Like what other types of da data will be able to enable the new the new blockchain thing so i think yeah yeah price feeds are important clearly and they will be for a long time and i don't think the ideal architecture has been figured out yet it's actually a really hard not just a hard uh, engineering problem it's a hard statistical problem uh for various reasons so yeah price feeds and and, and uh, iterations on price feeds i think are going to be a thing for a while but we also really care about how do we enable the next kind of generation of blockchain applications definitely that sounds great sasha and thank you for that uh, clarification and I'm curious moving forward you know as you mentioned it's not live yet <clears throat> is there any tentative schedule for what's the next big thing uh, and the next major steps for the team yeah so the next the next milestones I guess in the next six months or so is yeah get Airnode out live in production um, on Ethereum and other EVM compatible chains and then move on from there depending on demand uh, make sure it's integrated with all the API providers we've already signed on to the project and build out data feeds, again, depending on demand. Yeah. What that people sounds... are looking for. It, it, yeah, it's also yeah. tricky because like you want to serve demand, but at the same time, if you're trying to enable new, new types of blockchain applications, you kind of have to foresee future demand. So mm -hmm. it's like a balance of what people currently want versus what's going to enable interesting uh, projects in the future. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great point, Sasha. And if people are looking to learn more about, you know, Oracle feeds, why API 3's solutions are unique and more about the DAO and with the upcoming releases, what's the best way for them to stay involved and, and learn more about API 3? Uh, so our, our website's pretty easy to find if you Google us, but a lot of the conversation um, happens in Discord. So 
if you're interested in actually talking to us about our solution or even um, throwing your thoughts in there, we have a lot of discussion groups and stuff. So that's in our Discord. And you can find that on our website, a link to our Discord. Um, and also we, we put a lot of work into writing long form content on Medium. Like we have a lot of um, articles about, about our solution and about the types of products that it can enable. Like we put a lot of effort. And now I'm thinking back, I'm like, no one, no one in crypto, very few people in crypto seem to have a long intention, like a long intention span. So I'm like, maybe we shouldn't be working so hard on 10 minute articles and just throw out a couple of tweets every once in a while. But mm -hmm. if you do, if you do like reading more long form content, please check out our media. That sounds great, Sasha. I will leave all those links as well in the description box below for the viewers. Uh, all the best with you and your team moving forward. I'm looking forward to seeing what the future holds for API 3 and let's follow up in the near future. Thank you so much, Ashton.